Marie and Pierre Curie. Marie and Pierre Curie, two French scientists working in the field of chemistry and physics, are known for pioneering work in the field of radioactivity and discovering two radioactive elements. Their work helped to usher in an era of atomic science, leading to modern use of atomic power as a source of energy, a method of treating diseases, and the most feared weapon known to mankind. Maria Skladovska and Pierre Curie were born eight years and 850 miles apart, Maria in Warsaw, Poland, on the 7th of November in 1867, and Pierre Curie in Paris, France, on the 15th of May in 1859. For several years, the two would not know of each other's existence, but a common interest in experimental chemistry and physics would eventually bring them together. Maria Skladowska was born in the Russian partition of Poland to Vladislav and Bronislava Skladowska. Maria had four siblings, Zofia, Joseph, Helena, and Bronislava. Due to the Russian occupation of parts of Poland at the time, Maria's family could barely talk Polish to others, and Maria's father was fired from his job at a gymnasium. In addition to the misfortunes of their father, Zofia and her mother died of tuberculosis. To earn money to sustain the family, Maria's father began teaching students at the family home and placed an emphasis on the education of Maria and her siblings as well. After the death of her mother, Maria attended a public school where she graduated first in her class. After graduating, Maria wanted to travel to another country to receive a higher education due to the Russian government's ban on educating women. To further her education, Maria and her sister Bronislava joined a secret group of women scholars named the Flying University that conducted experiments away from the eyes of the government. While in the Flying University, Maria discovered that she had a talent for science, particularly physics and chemistry. She also conducted laboratory experiments and became fascinated by the idea of working in the field of experimental chemistry. To earn money for a trip to France, Maria worked as a governess in a small town outside of Warsaw, giving the money to her sister and receiving assistance two years later. By 1891, she had collected enough money to travel to Paris. In Paris, Maria attended the University of Paris and earned her master's degree in physics in 1893, as well as one in math in 1894. While completing her math degree, the Society for the Encouragement of National Industry hired Marie as a scientist to study the magnetic properties of steel. On the search for a bigger laboratory, Marie found Pierre Curie. Pierre Curie had been born 35 years earlier in Paris, France, to Eugene Curie and Sophie Claire Curie. Pierre had an older brother named Jacques, and the Curie family was of fairly high status. At a young age, Pierre was motivated by his father to become an assistant to Louis Gratiolet, a well-known French zoologist, and was tasked with finding amphibians for Gratiolet to dissect. Pierre was taught by his father and learned Latin and math, the latter of which he found that he had a natural talent for. For years, Pierre worked on topics in math, and by the age of 16 had earned his math degree from the University of Paris. In two more years, he had attained a higher degree and found work as a laboratory instructor. This job helped him to earn money, which he used to complete his doctorate. At the age of 21, Pierre and his brother began studying crystals, demonstrating that crystals exposed to pressure along their axis of symmetry will generate a small electric charge. They named this phenomenon piezoelectricity, and Pierre created a scale to measure this electric charge very precisely. Piezoelectricity is now used in many modern electronics in everyday life. In addition to piezoelectricity, Pierre experimented with the relationship between magnetism and temperature. When Marie met Pierre Curie, he had already established a name for himself and had begun work in a laboratory of his own. A Polish scientist and friend of both Marie and Pierre introduced Marie to Pierre because he thought Pierre could provide space in his laboratory for Marie to conduct her research. The two scientists talked about science, and after some time together, Pierre proposed to Marie, and Marie agreed to marry him on the 26th of July, 
in 1895. After traveling to Paris to visit her family, Marie returned to Paris to pursue a PhD, while Pierre attained his doctorate and became a professor at the University of Paris. Meanwhile, the German scientist Wilhelm Röntgen had discovered a new type of radiation, something he called X-rays, a discovery which was taken up by Henri Becquerel, a French physicist whom Pierre knew. He discovered that uranium emitted X-rays, which caught the attention of Marie Curie, who decided to investigate this new field of science. To conduct research into radioactivity, Marie repurposed her husband's piezoelectricity meter to measure the small electrical output produced by the X-rays from uranium by balancing a small current created by pressurizing crystals. She determined that the rays were atomic properties of the elements, meaning that the atom was not as scientists had previously imagined it. The most pressing question raised by this discovery was whether this energy could be harnessed, a question answered in the 1940s by the creation of the first nuclear reactor, then the first atomic bomb. During investigations of different minerals for radioactivity, Marie discovered that pitchblende, a mineral from which uranium was extracted, was much more radioactive than uranium itself. This meant that there would be another element besides uranium in the pitch blend, and Marie worked to discover that element. There were, in fact, two other elements in pitch blend, the first one being polonium, which the Curies discovered in 1898 and named after Marie's home country, and radium, which they discovered shortly after. The discovery of polonium was quickly overshadowed by that of radium, as radium was thought to cure diseases used in paints and dyes, and was widely applied to many other aspects of life. Marie and Pierre conducted many further studies into the properties of their new elements, and in 1903 were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. However, Marie was too ill to travel to Stockholm to accept the award, and Pierre had to go without her. Working in a laboratory where nearly everything was radioactive had made the Curies extremely ill, and they decided to shortly travel out of the city to live in the countryside. Shortly after their return to Paris, Pierre was struck by a horse carriage and died on the 19th of April in 1906. The University of Paris offered Marie the position that Pierre had previously held, and Marie moved to Sceaux, where Pierre's family lived. She continued their work on radioactivity, particularly Pierre's work on the effect of radioactivity on nearby objects, and was again nominated for the Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry. In December of 1911, she traveled to Sweden to accept the prize. After Pierre's death, Marie had fallen in love with a former student of his, Paul Langevin, another renowned scientist. However, Paul was already married, and after a short time, Marie was again left without a partner. She recruited the help of her daughter Irene in new laboratory experiments, as well as helping to create traveling X-ray machines to treat wounded soldiers during World War I. These X-ray machines helped doctors to see the wounds that they would be performing surgery on. By the end of the war in 1918, Marie Curie's affair had largely been forgotten, and she was again regarded as not only a great chemist, but also as a humanitarian. She traveled to America, where she was given $100,000 to purchase radium for an institute in France, and again later to receive another $50,000 donation. However, Marie's health was steadily and rapidly failing her. Marie Curie died on the 4th of July in 1934 in eastern France due to prolonged radiation exposure. Marie and Pierre Curie conducted extensive research into radioactivity and discovered and named two new elements, for which they both received Nobel Prizes. Their research has led to many advancements, both good and bad, in technology such as nuclear medicine, atomic energy, and the atomic bomb, a legacy that will affect all future generations. Thank you for watching this video, and this time there won't be a regular outro because I wanted to take a moment to say some things. Sigma Documentaries has been on YouTube for three years, and during those three years we've gotten 150,000 video views and 750 subscribers. 
while that might not seem like much, it means a lot to me, so I wanted to thank all of my subscribers and viewers for the continued support and dedication. I hope that in the next coming years, that support will remain, and perhaps even grow. With that said, it may have come to your attention that videos on this channel are becoming more and more delayed. This is because of several reasons. First of all, I try to make each video with more attention to detail and quality, which takes time. Second, I do have other priorities besides this channel, such as school and a job, and those can often take time out of working on the videos. I do try to put out videos as often as I can, but that is often disrupted by other things. Videos will keep coming, but they might become rare, so to speak. I have a schedule of videos which I want to make which I think will be interesting, so if you want to be updated when those come out, subscribe. Besides that, there's not much I wanted to mention for the end of this 50 video special, so thank you for watching. And if I've been putting images of nature in the background during this narration, I'll include a link to download those in the description. Keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.